The interpolation is certainly the most overpowered tool that Gris Pencil ever created. And in this video, I will demonstrate some methods on how to use and understand that feature in order for you to enjoy it more than I do. Besides saving you a lot of time, the interpolation has the ability to generate automatically smooth in-betweens for your animation. To illustrate that speech, here a situation with a moving square from position A to position B. A and B are the two keyframes needed for performing an interpolation. Let's redo this inside Blender on a new to the animation scene. Select the square, choose your brush, then on a viewport, hold shift left click to draw a perfect square. On the timeline below, the green highlight indicates your working layer name lines. The blue playhead your position on the timeline and this keyframe the position A with the square in it. For the fields layer you can just delete it. Now go to edit mode, grab the playhead and move it few frames forward. Pick the select tool, select the square, press G to move and X to lock on the X axis. Choose a position, then click to confirm. Thanks to the Auto King, a second keyframe has been created for position B. Grab the playhead and place it somewhere in between A and B. Go to Grease Pencil, then Interpolate Sequence. This will automatically add blue diamond shapes as in between for animating the square. And that's how the interpolation works. But at this stage, lot of possibilities will come up. Back to our example, after applying the interpolate sequence, you will have this interpolate menu to develop. In it, I recommend you to play around with step and type. Step is the number of frames that separate each keyframes. I mostly set this on two, but this depends on your animation style. And type refers to a curve that dictates the speed of the interpolation of a time. Among the list of curves, two of them worth the use. Linear for a constant speed and custom for enhancing the animation through custom curves. Linear is in is out and is in out. And speaking about adjustments and details, you also have access to a manual interpolation tool ideal for the frame by frame enthusiasts. Just click then slide to interpolate on any frame at any range of motion. However, it's important to say that the interpolation is built on directional movements only. And by this fact, his difficulty to perform curves motion. But this issue shouldn't prevent you to work manually for moving on. It doesn't seem like much, but still a valuable info for an animator. Anyway, the reason why I made this video is to help you interpolate your drawings correctly and avoid bad interpolations. So for the second part, I will teach you two methods. The first came from this video by Rio Timo, where he's interpolating with a chronological manner. You strictly need to draw both keyframes on the same strokes order and directions. By either memorize them,
or drawing them progressively from keyframe to keyframe. And only on these orders, the interpolation will work. The second method is a trick that I mastered over time, which consists to manipulate a duplicated keyframe. Start by drawing and duplicating your keyframe. Then carefully manipulate the strokes by switching between edit and sculpt mode. It will be convenient for you to set your tab key on Pi menu to switch and work rapidly. At this step, you have time to create your second keyframe. In edit mode, I will start to select the mouse, then press G to move over here on the face outline. Next, I will switch to sculpt mode, choose this selection mask, and with the push brush, shape the mouse to fusion with the face outline. Now, in edit mode, I will select all the front face part and then move to sculpt mode to shape it as if the face was turned. On the same process, grab the jawline and move it a bit forward. Carefully select the whole eye part, press R to rotate and Z for the Z axis. Turn it toward the face direction, and with the orientation, it should look like a compressed line. Also, make sure to sculpt and merge your overall with the face outline. Basically, the plan is to shape that duplicated keyframe into a brand new pose without deleting or adding any lines. You really need to preserve all the lines in order to be sure the keyframes are sharing the same info but not the same perspective. I will let you with this time lapse. Remember, this is not a run, but more a chance for you to familiarize with the software. And by doing it right, the interpolation will be guaranteed. Note, in each case, any forgetting or deleting strokes will fail the interpolation. Nonetheless, I truly recommend these two solid methods for your animations. Finally, for the last part, I will share you my advices. I do not recommend you to interpolate line art and colors at once. Even if it's a great idea, interpolating colors won't follow the same rule as the line art. Because of their vertex difference, they will tend to work independently instead of sticking together, which often end up giving bad results. The best option would be to only use the interpolation for the line art and then color manually. I mentioned earlier that interpolating to perform curves movement can be risky. Beside the deformation of the strokes, the drawing doesn't seem to respond correctly to any rotational motion. And since the interpolation is built on a strict directional movement, the results aren't as expected. Of course, it depends on the situation, but in worst case scenario, 
it's preferable to not interpolate for that purpose. In rare rotation cases, it could happen the interpolation unexpectedly flip your lines. And this issue comes from the flip mode option. Being on automatic by default, the interpolation will choose between flip or no flip. So just select which option suits better to your situation. One of my precious advices is to approve your interpolation before moving on. By the time you will start modifying the keyframes by adding or deleting strokes, you may not have the chance to interpolate again, and sometimes it's too late to turn back. So be careful. And to prevent this type of accident, I truly recommend to work with layers. Instead of gather everything on one layer, feel free to spread some pieces on different layers. In that way, you will be more organized to work and also able to locate and solve with ease any kind of issues. There are still some little tricks that I could teach you about the interpolation, but if you can master these basics, I can guarantee the interpolation won't be a secret for you anymore. So that's it for this video. It's been a while I wanted to make a clear video about the interpolation and I hope this one will be a great help for those who keep struggling using it. Thank you again for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share this episode. I love you all for the continued support. Take care. Cheers.